Good morning, Pastor Gallagher here for the Victory Hour. Welcome to our program here on YouTube, and we're glad to have you. We come out twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays. Invite your friends and have them tune in. So I want to go back to what we we're talking about this past Monday, and uh, we're talking from Isaiah 59. And by the way, let me mention this while I'm thinking of it. Don't forget, you are invited. I don't care where you're from. But you are invited to come to A, our Reformation Sunday services, which are on October 30th, 10 o'clock in the morning at Claville Assembly. We have this evening service at 6 o'clock as well. They're different sermons. But it's uh, Reformation Sunday. We are celebrating God's sovereign work through the Protestant Reformers on that day, because Reformation Day is October 31st. So Reformation Sunday is the day before. Come on Sunday, October 30th, 10 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock in the evening, uh, for a celebration of the Protestant Reformers. Um, we're at 7 Plainfield Pike in Foster, Rhode Island. 7 Plainfield Pike, Foster, Rhode Island. And uh, we'd be glad to have you. And we also are inviting you to our Harvest Supper. The Harvest Supper is when we come together for a fellowship on a Saturday night, and it's going to be a combination of remembering the Protestant Reformers and the Pilgrims, and the Puritans for that matter, but the Pilgrims mainly, because uh, the Pilgrims are really the children of the Reformation. And it was the Reformation coming and establishing these shores, and God has blessed this nation through that gospel that came from the Reformers from the scriptures, to the reformers, to the pilgrims, to you and I. And we have been blessed through that knowledge of the gospel of Christ. And we ought to celebrate that, that portion of history. So the Harvest Supper, and we're inviting you to it. I don't care where you're from. Now, I know a lot of people are listening from far away. I'm not expecting you to be able to come. But you can. You're welcome to if you have the unction in you. But our Harvest Supper will be on Saturday afternoon. November 12th at 4 o'clock. Saturday afternoon, November 12th at 4 o'clock. 4 to 5 or 4 to 5-ish is we'll sing some psalms, some um, hymns, and we will minister in the Word in regards to um, the Reformers and the Pilgrims. And we have a little something special for you, too. And then... After that, around 5 or shortly thereafter, we have a meal. A meal will be provided. We will not charge you for it. It's free. You come, and we'll feed you. It's sort of a, a potluck style is what most people would call it. And I always like to say church potluck suppers are always really great. You know, you get the cooks in the assembly, and whew, and uh, really nice. I think you'll enjoy it. But if you are coming, I'd like to have a heads up just so I know a head count, so we know if we need extra food to uh, supply for those that could show up. I'm not expecting a whole lot, Will. Clayville's a very small assembly, and we're in the sticks of Foster. But I, in my opinion, it's going to be worth the drive. And uh, we'll feed you, and we'll have some fellowship after. A little, little fun. No games or anything, but just some fellowship, some food. And when we go home, happy. Being fed with the Word of God and and fed in our stomachs, and we go, go home happy. And so that'll be Saturday, November 12th, uh, 4 o'clock. And um, if you're planning coming, I want you to email me and, t and give me a head count how many are coming. So email me, info at claybellassembly.com. Info at, you know, the symbol at, claybellassembly, all lowercase, claybellassembly.com. And just tell us you're coming and how many there, there will be. Or if you don't have a, a the internet access, then you can uh, well you can just write to me, um, the Victory Hour, P.O. Box two twenty two, Foster, Rhode Island zero two eight two five. That's the Victory Hour. Or you could address it Clavel Assembly. That'll work too. But whether you address it Clavel Assembly or the Victory Hour, the address is P.O. Box two twenty two, Foster, Rhode Island zero two eight two five. Come and. Uh, We'll be glad to have you. All right, so I've been talking about Isaiah 59. And in Isaiah 59, at this point in Israel's history, she's in a spiritually broken condition. Everything's going wrong. She has enemies that uh, want her head. 
and, uh, and nothing seems to be going right. The, the nation is collapsing morally, spiritually, and culturally. And no doubt there's a righteous remnant within there, and how, how small that is, how big that is, who can say for sure. But the righteous remnant is like, what, what, what's happening? What, where is the Lord in all this? And even the wicked that are responsible for most of that stuff, they say, well, where is God? If God is holy and God is good and God is righteous and where are his people, why doesn't he come and do something about it? And right out of the first verse, that's dealt with. Because the Lord, through the prophet Isaiah, tells them, it's not my fault. Because some of them may have thinking, well, I, God's not listening anymore. He doesn't hear our prayers. You know, if I may take the liberty, Habakkuk prayed something similar. But Habakkuk was a God-fearing man. And in Habakkuk chapter 1, um, starting at verse 2, Habakkuk expresses himself in a similar vein. He says, O Lord, how long shall I cry? Now remember, he's a God-fearing man. He says, How long shall I cry? And thou wilt not hear. Even cry unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. And he means violence within the nation. And you won't come and put a stop to it. Lord, we're wicked. Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. This is the condition of the nation of Israel. He says, therefore, the law is slacked. They're not law abiding anymore. That's their culture. The law is slacked, and judgment doth never go forth. There's no justice in the land. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. The persecution of the righteous by the wicked who are in control. Therefore, wrong judgment proceedeth. Well, Habakkuk was a God-fearing man. He's looking for the Lord to come and chasten them and bring them to repentance. But Lord seems to be doing nothing. So he's sort of exasperated and he's expressioning his, his exasperation and consternation to the Lord as a God-fearing believer. That's different than what's going on in Isaiah. When they're questioning God, where are you? The problem is they weren't God-fearing. They were walking in sin. And so in verse 1 of Isaiah 59, we read, Behold, the, Lord, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot say, neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. In other words, the Lord is saying to Israel through the prophet, Oh, I haven't lost my power to save you. I've just chosen not to. Oh, my ear isn't dull. My ear isn't heavy as if I can't hear your prayers. I've just chosen not to answer them. Wow. Why? He says, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God. The reason there seems to be a wall between God and his people is because of their sins. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled. Now listen. At the end of the broadcast, the end of the, do you call it a broadcast when we're on YouTube? I'm I'm so used to doing that because I had a radio program, uh, a commentary like this. Um. Well, I guess for 21 years or so. 22 years. 21, 22 years. And I always refer to it as a broadcast. So every once in a while I may do that here. And I mean, a broadcast, I don't know if that really applies to YouTube. I don't think it does. But you'll understand when I make that mistake. You know, you go when you speak extemporaneously, you go back to the old school of speech. What you're used to. That's what I'm used to saying. But what had brought a wall between God and his people was their sins. Now, I was saying last week, uh, not last week, but this past Monday, the previous posting here on YouTube, that what Isaiah is describing as Israel's condition is the condition of the United States of America right now in October of 2022. And it's been true for a few years now. 
It has been building for decades, but we have reached a pinnacle. We are on the verge of a leftist, globalist, anti-Christian, godless, evil revolution that is being promoted by our political leaders. And it is a cancer that is spreading across the whole world because of the global community of the internet. All the nations are getting together and building the Tower of Babel again. And we're all on the politically correct woke bandwagon to hell. What was true in Isaiah's day for Israel is true for us here in the United States. Our iniquities have separated us from God. If I may make the substitution of pronoun. Verse 3. Our hands are defiled with blood. Just like Jerusalem's hands were defiled with blood. Our fingers are defiled with iniquity. Just like Israel's fingers were defiled with iniquity. Our lips have spoken lies. Have you ever seen so much lying by politicians and the media? You know, Trump isn't wrong. They're fake news. It's like the the news outlets of the communist apparatus. Stooges of the political establishment. Now, how do you watch the news and you not know that? Our fingers are defiled with iniquity. Our lips have spoken lies. Our tongues have muttered perverseness. Ooh, yes. None call for justice. Where is justice? Where is law, law and order now? Nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity. They speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Jumping down to verse 7. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. Have you gone shopping at the supermarket? Do you know what your oil is costing you to put in your oil tank to heat your home? Or if you get natural gas or whatever? You know, the Democrats are saying we're going to get rid of fossil fuels by 2030, 2035. They don't care about the environment. They're liars. They care about power and control. But uh, in case someone's been living in a bubble and you don't know what I'm talking about, just before I sat down, well, just when I sat down to make this YouTube clip, I took five minutes off the top of my head and I'm missing a whole bunch of things. Just doing off the top of my head. I just made down a little list. Okay? My lousy handwriting. A little list of stuff. I just whipped it out. Say, now remember to say some of these things, you know. We're all familiar with this. You've had your eyes open the last few years. It's only getting worse and worse. So go back to 2020. You say, Pastor, is the United States really in the same place that Israel was in Isaiah 59? Oh, I haven't even finished reading Isaiah 59. Are we there? Yeah, I think so. Remember, going back to, what is it, 2020? You had Black Lives Matter, a Marxist-founded group The founders of Black Lives Matter admit that they're Marxists. They're professional Marxists. They say so. You can watch it on YouTube. Black Lives Matter and Tifa were out creating violence everywhere they went. They were destroying private property, smashing windows and stealing and looting and destroying property in those businesses and ruining the livelihoods of of people, some people who may have poured their life savings into this private business that was meant to sustain them, and now they've lost everything. They were attacking police officers, defund the police, they're uh, smashing the windows on police cars and, and burning them up, and destroying them. They took over, remember Chaz was that in Seattle? 
Chaz, and there was a whole block. No one could come here. No police are allowed. They took over the police station. And the thugs are walking up down the street with semi-automatic rifles, making sure any cops come around or any goody two-shoe people, we're going to take care of them. And they, then they're just happening. And there was a, a total police stand down. And when they were burning businesses and, and hurting people and killing people and destroying property and burning cities, there was a police stand down. And the few that did get arrested, well, don't you know, these liberal district attorneys that were, were funded by George Soros and other radical leftist groups to get in, that want to empty the prisons, take all these people and not have them go to prison. So these people that were doing all this damage for a whole year and criminals like Nancy Pelosi and the, and the rest of those clowns, they were justifying what they were doing in their political way, but they were justifying it. We all heard it. They're enemies of the people. And these district attorneys that get these leftist radical uh, arsonists and, and uh, people guilty of assault and all sorts of things, and they get them in front of the judge, they get them right back out. It was catch and release, catch and release, catch and release. We watched it for a year. They make up lies. Oh, yes. George Floyd. All the lies, the spin put on that was sickening. You know, just in this past September, last month, in 2022, right? Remember the, the, the one where the guy, I don't remember the guy's name, but that lunatic with the hatchet, and he was in a Manhattan McDonald's. He's taking the hatchet, and he's smashing tables and breaking glass. He went up to one woman and put her against a wall. And she was frightened to death. And there's another guy he hit in the head. He's taking his a hatchet. And he's just smashing, destroying everything. Terrorized the place. Well, they arrested him. They released him the same day. And then he's out giving interviews to the media. What? You know, someone push the stupid button. There was a button that says stupid. And they hit it. And everybody became stupid. We're putting up with this nonsense. The insane button. There's a button that says insane. And someone hit it. And then everybody went insane. And that fellow with the hatchet, he gave an interview. <laughs> I was watching the interview on YouTube. And uh, it made news, but they didn't, re they didn't report, most of them didn't report the full quote. The part they didn't quote was, he said, because he was asked, Why, well, you know, what do you have a hatchet for? What's this all about? And he says, oh, I'm not bound. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I'm just running around with an axe, threatening people and smashing things. He, but this is what he said in his interview. You can watch it on YouTube. He said, quote, I'm out, I'm out there on the road. This is why he carries a hatchet. He says, I'm out there on the road, always getting into it with drivers. Which is what the hatchet is for. The hatchet is for drivers of cars. Oh, well, that's a little bit more reasonable. What? He says, I'm always getting into it with drivers, which is what the hatchet is for. He said, it's not for people. It's for trees and vehicles. Oh, you never know when you got to chop down a tree with a hatchet. Or some car needs to be dented and smashed with a hatchet. So I got to have it on me. And I, this happens all the time. I'm always getting into it with other drivers. In other words, he's under constant road rage, and so he carries a hatchet. And that's why I had it at McDonald's and was threatening the people. He says, oh, this, this was, I, was, I had no intention to hurt anybody. This is just for uh, vehicles and trees. Well, I, you know, when he was in that Manhattan McDonald's, I am quite sure there were no trees inside, and there were no vehicles of any kind. No, I think he was terrorizing the people. He's out the same day he does it. There's your law and order in New York. Someone hit the stupid button. Actually, what they really hit was the, the revolution button. Destroy America from within. And we're going to remake it after our Marxist image, our globalist, antichrist, godless, fill the government troughs for the elite that will rule button.
The Marxist radical left dominates and controls the Democrat Party now. We've seen it. And they've been all, they were all for that violence. No matter what they say, they were for the violence going on in 2020 and everything burning down because they are jumping on the bandwagon, Black Lives Matter, and, and Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer could bow a knee, not to God, but to evil. Remember all the violence that was being promoted against President Trump? They had that uh, Shakespeare in the pot. Well, the culminating scene is stabbing him to death, stabbing President Trump to death. That's what they were doing. Multiple people coming from all angles, stabbing. Oh, that play was great. It had a higher reviews. The, the, and he was dressed just like Donald Trump with the orange hair and the red tie and the dark suit. Yeah, we all understood. Kathy Griffin can, uh, in effigy, cut, his, cut Trump's head off and hold it up dripping with blood. And he... he that's comedy. You think it's funny. Madonna wants to blow up the White House and um, Jack, whatever that lame Hollywood guy, what's the guy who played whatever, Pirates of the Caribbean? I don't know. What, I forget his name. Who cares? That big dork? Say, Pastor, you're not talking like a Christian minister. No, that's exactly what I'm talking like. Jesus said to the Pharisees that they were fools, that they were liars that they were snakes, that they were of their father, the devil. You know, we get a lot of those people running around now. And a lot of them sit in the halls of government of this nation. Biden, Maxine Waters, Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi just recently said, you get that they clipped, they showed in the January 6th, the January 6th committee. And, uh, there's Nancy Pelosi on January 6th saying she wants President Trump to come into the Capitol. Then he'd be trespassing and she would punch him and she would go and, and take him out and punch him and then she'd go to jail and she'd be happy. That's what she's saying. She's the Speaker of the House. Someone hit the stupid button, the insane button, the revolution button. And then we've got the liar in chief. Joe Biden. You say, Pastor, we should, you shouldn't say that about our leaders. We should pray for our leaders. I do pray for our leaders. Lord, may their days be few and may another take their office. And I'm not kidding. By the way, that's a Bible prayer. When the wicked rule, the hearts of the righteous a chafed. Are they not? How do you think God sees all this? Should we see it differently? I do pray for our leaders. I pray first for their conversion, for their repentance, that they would do what is right. But if they're not going to do what is right and they're going to persecute the righteous and abuse the poor, then may their days be few and another take their office. But the liar in chief. He promised, you can watch it. You can watch it on YouTube. You can watch it. He promised before God. He took an oath. He said, I can't remember exactly how he said, as God is my witness. But he referred specifically to God. He was declaring before God that he would always be straight with the American people. He said that before God. He would always be straight with the American people. When is Joe Biden not lying? He was going to be the uniter in chief. He was going to bring America together. He, he was going to be the president of both the Democrats and the Republicans. He was the great uniter. And that's why he gave that speech with the blood red background, with the military guy from the background, with the guns, and basically said, all Trump supporters better look out. You, you are a threat to this nation. And the, the, the symbolism was, we'll come and get you. Yeah, that's half the nation. Uniter in chief. Yeah, right. Before God, he'll be a straight shooter. Straight shooter? Oh, no, he's not responsible for any of this inflation. Oh, no, straight shooter? Look at the history of his... I don't think there's ever been a politician who has lied more. That's his thing. I don't know that he can tell the truth. Cancel culture everywhere. Everybody's been, We don't believe in the First Amendment anymore. There's a revolution. 
and the educational system at the college level is supporting destruction of the First Amendment with cancel culture and political correctness, as is the media, the lying media, yeah. And they've weaponized the political leaders in Washington, D.C., which are criminals, have weaponized the FBI and the DOJ against conservatives, particularly against Trump supporters. Spying on conservatives has been proven. It's not a conspiracy theory. The Democrats this year are running, in the midterms, they're running on killing babies. Yes, that's right. Don't vote for that guy. He's, pro, he's pro-life. He's pro I'm all in favor of killing babies right up to the last minute. In fact, even after the last minute, maybe. And then this is like their main thing. They're running, they're, multiple Democrats have been running uh, claiming in, politi- in political ads, mind you, that, quote, Democrats have single-mindedly saved the economy. Huh. Your lips have spoken lies, Isaiah said to Israel. Hmm. They lie. Your lips have spoken lie. Your tongues have muttered perverseness. Perverseness? What about this transgender grooming push on our little children in government Marxist public schools, which are meant to destroy and corrupt them and make them into sexual perverts? And then the cancel culture of the parents so they can shut up and have no say. You say, Pastor, you're speaking strong. No, I'm speaking at the level at which things are actually happening. I'm describing it in terms that are equal to the monstrosity of the offense. It's child abuse. They go to these homosexual strip clubs and transgendered strip clubs and have family day and show the kids how they can strut down the aisle half naked and be a cross-dresser too. Perverseness. Yeah, their lips, their lips speak perverseness. They, their tongue hath muttered perverseness. That's us. I can't even get through all this. There's too much. Open borders, wide open. They say, if you want uh, voter ID, you're, you're, you're anti-democracy. You're trying to destroy our democracy. That, that's what they say to the Republicans. But when they take a poll of everybody, not just Republicans, of everybody, it was something like 79% want voter ID because they lie, cheat, and steal when it comes to voting. And you know it. That's why they want all the illegals in. One, for one thing, They've already raised the question in different hamlets. Can illegals vote in local elections? The answer is no. The answer is, as Americans, over our dead bodies. The borders are wide open. By the way, a lot of Republicans have been open for the borders, uh, have been uh, promoting open borders, pretending they're trying to close them. They're li- many of them are liars, too. Most Republicans are rhinos and they're phonies. They're as bad as the Democrats. There's a few that maybe mean business. I don't believe they're the majority at all. Majority will talk that way come election time, but they will be turncoats as soon as they're in. And right back to the establishment spin. They lie about global warming and the imminent destruction of the planet. They've been saying that since I was a, 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 a young man in the 70s. I've heard that how many times? Every time it has been proven to be a lie. This is a lie. This is the Great Reset. Cognitive warfare. Look up cognitive warfare. We are going through a revolution like Isaiah and his nation was going through a revolution. We need to turn to God or else we're going to lose everything. And I pray that we do. Be salt and light as Christians, and bear witness to the truth, and pray for our people and for our nation. Look, my time's up. I've got to go. Jim Gallagher, reminding you in the words of our blessed Lord and Savior, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free.